Yeah, hello from Viking Aircraft Engines. We're going to review the installation of a fuel header tank in the Super Duty aircraft, which will be the same as an installation of a header tank in any 750, uh, possibly also the 701 aircraft, even though the 701 likely will use a smaller tank. First, we're gonna show the installation of a little bit of structure, which is very minimal, to the side of the airplane. In fact, this row of rivets behind the aft window is used to rivet in place a piece like this. Just go to Home Depot and get a 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 16 inch piece of uh, square tubing and then uh, rivet it to the vertical part here behind the skin. Prior to doing that, take a Dremel tool and just cut some slots uh, on uh, each side uh, that later will become evident what they are for. Let's take a look at that. Here you can see the piece of aluminum riveted to the fuselage skin. In that particular location, we use the 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 16 rather than the lighter weight L-angle supplied with the kit. We cut those slots in the aluminum channel in order to push a T-bolt style hose clamp through in two locations which are available from Viking that fit this header tank. And then you snug those up until you're happy with the fit of the tank and this takes all the vertical loading of the tank without the manufacturing of big brackets and so forth. It also allows plenty of room underneath the tank for uh, working on the electrical uh, and fuel pump installation. Now, if we only left it with that, the pump obviously, uh, the tank obviously could swing back and forth. Vertically, it's now arrested. In order to prevent that, we make a very simple bracket. We use a couple of AM3 screws. In fact, we put some washers on them to make sure that we don't exceed the thread length of the tapped holes in the tank. And we also bolt this bracket to the structure of the aircraft. Uh, here in the Super Duty, we riveted it, and it is in the area where the back seat is attached. And that physically secures the tank and retains it safely in the airplane. Next, we're installing the uh, four hoses that go to the tanks. Two of them go to the left tank on the Super Duty. We've made holes and provision to route them through these channels. And then uh, two of them go to the other side. One is a vent and one is a feed. We also uh, have the fuel uh, level sensor visible, which the only job there is to wire it and uh, to the uh, Viking view, um, or actually take that back. The, these have separate gauges that uh, read this, and we'll show that up front. So on top of the tank, install the fittings and hoses, and wire the fuel sensor. That's all there's to be done. Let's quickly cover the bottom of the tank. Let's do the wiring first. Each pump has a connector with a positive mark, and obviously the second wire is a negative. <clears throat> Route these to a, your grounding bus separately, have separate terminals for each one in order to make it as redundant as possible, and then uh, the positive side goes to your switches. These are very low amperage draw pumps, so something like a 5 amp breaker is more than enough. It's a 1.6 total draw uh, of each pump. Now let's cover any other things on the bottom of the tank. For instance, you see a plug here and a plug over here. Uh, we will drain this airplane and now install what we wanted to have for some time. And that is a drain in the header tank in order to be able to uh, drain it when we want to empty the whole airplane of fuel. So we'll extend that down with a steel nipple through the floor and put a quick drain underneath here so that we can do that. We can sample fuel and we can also drain the air, airplane for uh, uh, fuel during uh, maintenance. 
Now let's get to fuel. Each pump has a quick disconnect fuel fitting, which you will lubricate with O-ring grease when you remove and reinstall because there's an O-ring in there. Uh, the hoses then go to your um, splitter up here that we have just mounted to the wall. And this splitter is explained in the fuel system as a check valve assembly. <clears throat> Basically, each hose from each pump go into this aluminum block. All passages in the block are connected, so it doesn't matter which ones you use. There are two check valves right here, one for the left, one for the right. That's so that fuel cannot flow back through the other pump. Once it gets into this block, it is then locked between this block and the engine up front. There is a hose that leaves the block in the front here. And it goes through the high pressure filter. Then after the high pressure filter, it is an uncut, unopened, single hose all the way to the engine. Nowhere inside the airplane is there a fuel fitting or a connector or an elbow or anything. Um, the fuel will run then in through this channel inside here, but then as soon as it gets past the landing gear, it will drop back down and run in a channel underneath the airplane. Now, in addition to that, for the in that splitter that we talked about, the aluminum uh, check valve assembly, we use one other fit, one other port for our fuel pressure transducer. Now, there's another update to the system. There's one more port on this on the opposite side that's not being used right now, and we're going to put a fitting in there, and there will be a hose going to uh, the top of the header tank. There's additional fittings up there. Uh, and if we don't have another oven one on top, we'll just use one of the two on the bottom because it doesn't matter if it goes to the top or the bottom. We have one here and one here. And that's going to have just, there's just a hose coming from the check valve assembly back to the fuel tank. And it has a 10 thousandths bleed orifice in it. And that's only because uh, after these two check valves, and like I said, up to the engine, once that's pressurized with 43 PSI, uh, the, the, that fuel cannot escape anywhere. So now we know that the high pressure system of the engine is 2,200 pounds from the mechanical pump on the engine up to the injectors like a diesel engine. If any of that fuel were to leak back into the system, it would pressurize this filter and this hose with possibly several hundred pounds of pressure, which of course we don't want, so we would rather than just have a bleed off of this, off of this block and then just a hose from there and back down to one of these connectors. So just a simple hose with that uh, inline bleed. Basically the bleed gets screwed into either the tank or into the block and then a hose between them. So that's pretty simple. And that's really all there is to the installation of this system. And on the front, you're just going to clip it to the uh, uh, engine fuel pump.